and has learned about it. Oh, if you knew, she'll tell you, how difficult it was to give birth to you. The, the prototypical mother, oh, how I've suffered, is speaking truth, not just physical truth. To be a mother is a call to suffering. Not just the beginning of life. The word here is greatly, greatly your pain in childbirth will be. It's a repeated word that, that we get greatly multiplied. But it's nearly, it's nearly the same word. It's a, it's a doubled up Hebrew word. Great, great will be your pain in childbirth. And in case you didn't catch it the first time, he says it again, in pain you shall bring forth children. But a mother suffers more than that. A mother suffers when her children stumble. A mother suffers when her children get sick. A mother suffers when her children are foolish. A mother suffers when her children suffer. A mother suffers when her children leave. A mother suffers when her children leave the Lord. A mother suffers when her children pass away. It's a, it's a particular life of a mother. It's a particular call of a mother. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is grief to his mother. Now, I know that's poetry. I know that's a truism. But it's, it's true. Mothers take it upon themselves more passionately than us guys do. I remember my own mother watching one of us uh, three, we were on a, a school field trip, and the field trip was such that we could go into a restaurant and eat. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Uh, but one of us was sitting across the restaurant eating with his friends. My mother was a chaperone on this trip, and I remember her re reaction afterwards. She said, oh, I had to watch my, oh, he was just sitting there, and he was eating so sloppily. Oh, it was so embarrassing. Just a while, and he couldn't, oh, my goodness, I practically had to leave the restaurant. Mothers suffer in particular ways. If we don't sit up straight, the mother across the room is going, sit up, sit up. If you forget your lines on stage in a stage production, your mother is mouthing them to get you to remember them. Mothers particularly reflect and follow the lives of their children. One woman writes of the transition in her life from being a woman to being a mother. I'll spare you the details, this is her words. I'll spare you the details, but I will say that this was a kind of pain I experienced as I labored to birth my son, I felt remarkable changes in my body, and I knew that it was necessary and good. In retrospect, I recognized that God was with me the whole time, just as God always is. I thought I loved, excuse me, I thought I had known love before. I thought I had loved my parents, my family, my husband, my God, but in that quiet darkness, Interrupted only by my baby's cries and the hum of measurements from the nurses, my heart felt like it was breaking to grow enough to capture the love that I now had. It's a love so big that it scares me. It's the kind of love I'm pretty sure that would lead me to fight a lion with my bare hands or step in front of a car or a bullet at any minute or any number of crazy things. I can't help but wonder if this 
full, if, if I'm full of this courageous love for my son, how much more does God love us? Like a mother, God gave birth to creation and knew it was good. And when we turned away, our love failed. God was willing to experience unspeakable pain in order to bring us all into new life. What we see in Genesis 3 is God's discipline. And when we learn, what we learned from Hebrews 12, we knew anyway, but Hebrews 12 spells it out so beautifully, that God disciplines those he loves. And so this discipline, the pain of this discipline, the anguish of this curse, the, the trouble brought into our lives, if we look at it properly, will get us to understand, appreciate, and draw closer to God. And in this, you notice the two things going on in verse 16 of Genesis 3. The two, two, two people are brought into a woman's life. One is her child. Her child, your child is going to bring you pain. Your child brings you pain. Mary is told uh, specifically uh, that her child would bring her pain. But more than just the pain of birth, Simeon told Mary, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and the sign to, to the oppressed, to be oppressed, and a sword will pierce even your own soul, to the end that many thoughts, that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Such it is as it is for women, for mothers, that there's the extra pain of what your child goes through. Mary specifically was told that she would be pierced with suffering. So the one pain in, in, uh, in the, the discipline of God in Genesis, Genesis 3 is from the child. The other discipline to women in Genesis 3 is from the husband, in regard to the husband at least. Yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Women love becoming mothers. Many, most, I can't say all, I'm not a woman, but most women powerfully desire to be a mom, honor motherhood, enjoy the aspect of motherhood. But women also want to be something else. They also want to be a wife. And so both parts of what God has disciplined women for fulfill deep, powerful desires in women's lives. What an awesome situation that in this, in this anguish, in this str struggle, in this difficulty, women are drawn to both parts of what God says is going to be tough for you. God says this is going to be hard. It's, it, it wasn't intended to be hard. If we had stayed in our walk with him, these things wouldn't have come upon us. But they have. And rather than being absolute uh, uh, aspects of pain and curse and regret, they become points of, what did Jesus call it? Joy. You have the pain of childbirth, and then you forget about it because of the joy we read John, John 16. Out of joy, the pain gets forgotten. God had a specific power uh, plan here. He had a specific thing for us to learn here. These, these punishments, these disciplines from God are for our growth or for our good. These create relationships that are powerful motivators for us on both sides. Women will jump in front of cars and have jumped and given their lives for the lives of their children, but it works the other way too, which is why this day is, is powerful in all aspects. Anybody recognize the name Yahya Abdi? Probably not. Yahya Abdi was quite famous in the news about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. 
Gaya Abdi is a 15-year-old who was living in Southern California. He snuck down to LAX, I think it was, climbed up in the wheel well of a plane flying to Hawaii at 747, whatever it was, and then proceeded to fly, I don't know how you survive at 38,000 feet at those temperatures with so little oxygen, but he climbed out of that wheel well in the Hawaii airport and he was arrested. And everybody went, ah, what's wrong with our airport security? This is ridiculous. How can a guy just climb onto the plane? And other people were saying, how'd the guy survive anyway? And who is this troublemaker? You know what he was doing? He was told that his mother was dead. All his life he thought his mother was dead. And then he learned that she was alive and living in Ethiopia. And he was trying to get home to his mother. Now, when you hear that, you go, oh, poor guy. You've, you've gone from terrorist to, you know, who's keeping this young man away from his mother? What's this? This is awful. It's a powerful draw that God has given to us. It's a powerful lesson that we have. Now, these magnificent ladies that God has put into our lives. Children, you know the two things you're supposed to do. One rises sort of to the top. Obey your mother. And Ephesians 6 adds, honor your mother, quoting the Old Testament. Obey and honor Make her card, give her a kiss, make sure she gets a flower before she leaves today. But the other 360 plus days of the year, you honor her, you listen to her, you thank God for her, you obey her. Gentlemen, our responsibility to these magnificent women that God has given to us is to love them. Ephesians 5 teaches us that clearly and loudly and, and repeatedly. What kind of sacrificial love that Christ gave the church is our pattern for love for these ladies. But more than that, more than that, we should have the wisdom and the appreciation of what God has done for us in giving us these magnificent, these magnificent gifts, these beautiful women to share our lives with. These women who we get to be part of their curse, their discipline. We are part of that. Let's our part of that to them be a joy for them. That we can respect and appreciate what God has given to us. A woman is a, a, woman is a beautiful thing designed for you, built for you, built to be wife, built to be mother. In every way, heart and body and mind and soul and spirit, every way. A woman is designed for those and is blessed. And let the blessings come from us. Ran into this poem, and if you have a wife, or young men, if you want a wife or want to get one, this comes, I've, we found it in the book, um, A Kiss Dating Goodbye. It's a, woman, it's a poem written by Lena Latrup, a, a young lady, about the value of a woman's love. Do you know you have asked for the costliest thing ever made by the hand above? She's talking to young men who want to marry a young woman. A woman's heart and a woman's life and a woman's wonderful love. Do you know you have asked for this priceless thing as a child might ask for a toy? Demanding what others have died to win with the reckless dash of a boy. You have written my lesson of duty out, man like you have questioned me. Now stand at the bar of a woman's soul until I question thee. You require your mutton shall always be hot, your socks and shirt be whole. I require your heart be true as God's stars, as pure as as his heaven, your soul. You require a cook for your mutton and beef. I require a far greater thing, 
a seamstress you're wanting for socks and shirt, I look for a man and a king. A king for the beautiful realm called home, and a man that his, that his maker God shall look upon as he did the first and say, it is very good. I am fair and young, but the rose may fade from this soft young cheek one day. Will you love me then, mid the falling leaves, as you did among the blossoms of May? Is your heart an ocean so strong and true I may launch all on its tide? A loving woman finds heaven and hell. A loving woman finds heaven and hell on the day she is made a bride. I require all things that are grand and true, all things that a man should be. If you give this all, I would stake my life to be all you demand of me. If you cannot be this, a laundress and cook you can hire with little to pay. But a woman's heart and a woman's life are not to be young, won that way. It's a beautiful thing to be brought into this life by our Heavenly Father. He desired men to be men who love and lead, and women to be women who care and connect. What a great gift we have. What a great joy it is to set aside a day to say, to say thank you to the moms around us. But I want us to treasure all the ladies around us, young and old, moms or not, uh, that, and appreciate the gift of God that they are. This morning, if there's any here who wish to be baptized into Christ, or if you have any need that we can help you with, please come forward and let us know about it while we stand and sing the song that Bones has chosen for us. Please come.